Good morning. A very warm welcome to St. George's Church. Today, the Feast of Pentecost. It's very good to have you with us, sharing in our service here at St. George's or at home on our Facebook or YouTube channels. Wherever you're joining us from, happy Pentecost. May God bless us together with the gift of his Holy Spirit in our hearts. Our service this morning is a service of the Holy Eucharist, the service of Holy Communion. As always in Anglican churches, all Christians are very warmly welcome to receive the sacrament. If you'd rather receive a blessing, that's fine too. Put your hand across your chest, we know to give you a blessing instead. We're giving, distributing the sacrament here at the front step. There'll be a children's church during our service this morning. And I'll announce the point at the beginning of the sermon where the children go with Carolyn to their special activities. There'll also be coffee in the church garden after the service. And so as we prepare to meet with God this morning for our hour of worship, may I ask you to prepare your hearts by keeping a minute or two of quiet together.
let us celebrate our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Page three in the white service booklets. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We pray together. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please kneel? St. Paul wrote, What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. At the top of page four, we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent and are themselves forgiving, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we sing together the Gloria in Excelsis on page five. Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children 
with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated. And for our first reading, we have, I think, 21 people reading our first reading. Well, maybe not 21, but in a number of languages, about a dozen languages. Can I invite those who are going to read the Acts reading to come forward and stand on the step here at the front? Moses? और उन्हें आग के शोले किसी भटकती हुई जबाने दिखाई दी और उनमें से हर एक पर आ ठहरे और वो सब रुल्क दस से भर गए और गैर जबाने बोलने लगे जिस तरह रू ने उन्हें बोलने की ताकत बख्शी as Pantangos of Stano, Jesus Salman Gromadu, a lord of Azamishana, Dokolas, who is the spoil of Ritsu, the Kronitzek Swishasho. A figure of us are hooked there, I can see a Jainu Inu, a Gisterdish Faith, a Galilee Eats and Galer, a Talakans. Tofil Q, a Messi Har E, a Pni of me, Jan Bumiki Pasha Sultahe. हम जो पार्थी और मेदी और इलामी और मेसोपोटामिया और यहूदिया और कपुदिकिया और पुंतुस और एशिया de la Phrygie de la Pamphylie de l'Égypte du territoire de la Libye voisine de Cyrène et résidence venue de Rome juif de naissance ou par conversion crétois et arabe nous les entendons Parlez dans notre langue des merveilles de Dieu. I am a bang of 
Oma Abangwe Mo Kwa Obara Chupo Ubochi Onye Mwani Abia Bo Oke Ubochi Awo Nke Na Hupi Ike O Ge Rukwa Na Onye Obula Nke Ga Oku Awo Onye Mwani Aga Azok Daya Tell us what languages we've just been listening to, because I got lost halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> what language did you read in? No German. No German. Urdu. Urdu. Hindi. Hindi. French. French. Tamil. Tamil. Finnish. Finnish. Uh, Welsh. Or Serbian. <laughs> <laughs> All in the same verse, yeah? Hungarian uh, and Swedish. Beautiful. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. What a gift to our congregation that we come from so many lands in our world. God has brought us together. Today's psalm is Psalm 104. We pray it together. on this white service paper. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. There is the sea, spread far and wide. There go the ships, and there is that Leviathan. All these look to you when you gave it to them they gather it when you hide your face they are troubled when you send forth your spirit they are created May the glory of the Lord endure forever. He looks on the earth and it trembles. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. So shall my song please him. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Hymn number 157. We stand to sing.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me of anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. children go with Carolyn through the door at the back to their special activities. May I pray, may I preach, may we hear the words of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to talk for a few minutes today about joy in heaven. A few years ago, Katrin Stewart led a spring retreat for us at St. George's on joy. Her inspiration was the Paul Gerhardt hymn that Kate sang for us last Sunday, Geh aus mein Herz und suche Freude. And we began the retreat together in the garden of the retreat house with a walk of joy. I thought to myself, okay, let's see. She gave each of us a different card. And as we set out into the spring garden, we looked around and every few minutes we stopped and one person opened their card and read what was written on it. Mine said, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. My heart sank. 
I know this verse very well, and it always gave me a sinking feeling. Oh dear, more repentance, more penance, more sackcloth and ashes. I thought this retreat was going to be about joy. But then I was touched just a moment later, a moment later with the opening words of this verse, more joy in heaven. Maybe instead of being so earthly bound and caught up with my feet in the mud, I needed to open a door, turn around and accept the gift of heavenly joy. That verse really touched me that day and has stayed with me five or six years later. Will I turn round? At moments when I'm stressed, when my feet are stuck in the mud of everyday life, will I open that door and receive the gift of heavenly joy in my life? It's become my verse. I believe this is God's gift to each one of us at Pentecost. The question, will we keep our heads, our minds, our hearts consigned to the everyday, or will we stop, turn around, accept that God loves us, and open our hearts to receive joy as God's gift to us? The collect for today in red on the service paper. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love, and so renew the face of the earth. N.T. Wright, the theologian, writes, those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. Individually and corporately, they become places where heaven and earth meet. They become places where the face of the earth is renewed. In other words, the way God chooses to renew the face of the earth is by renewing human lives. And he begins with us. And so Jesus' words, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents, suggest to us the path for us. It tells us that we need to look again at the way we have been looking at life, the way we've been seeing life, the way we live, and calls us to have a rethink. How would it look if we consider that God wants to pour his love, his joy, his peace into your life, to renew you, and through you to renew the world around you, your family, your workplace, your apartment block, your neighborhood. It's about opening a door inside our hearts inside our heads, reconsidering, rethinking, turning around. What if God is standing outside our lives asking to come in, to be in our hearts, to be in our thoughts, to be in our minds, our bodies? God on the inside. It's the message of Pentecost. God not just with me, but somewhere out there, but rather God inside me, the Holy Spirit inside, close to me, waiting for me in the silence of my heart and wanting to fill my life with heavenly joy. We've got our preliminary labyrinth outside and in a way it's a beautiful picture of God waiting for me in the center of my life and what I need to do is to quietly recenter myself to find God. So when you go out after the service or come by during the week and walk the labyrinth. Imagine God is waiting for you in the center and your job is to walk the path, the winding path, to center your life and find God is waiting for you in the heart of your life. To see the world, 
to see one another, to see ourselves, to see life with God's eyes. That's what we've just done in the psalm this morning, to see the world with God's spirit inside us, looking at the world with enlightened, loving, hope-filled, joyful eyes. There go the ships, and there is that huge sea monster which you made to play in the deep. Jesus once told of a merchant who found a pearl, a pearl so incomparable in beauty that he radically sold everything in order to possess that one pearl. And the joy that he gained swallowed up any possible remorse that he had in what he had sold. My brothers and sisters, I've said it before and I'll keep saying it again, Christianity is not a grim-faced self-discipline. Rather, it is an exuberant new life, easily worth turning our lives around for. C.S. Lewis, the Oxford academic, wrote, I think all Christians would agree with me if I said that though Christianity seems at first to be all about morality, all about duties and rules and guilt and virtue, yet it leads you on, out of all that, into something beyond. One has a glimpse of a country where they don't talk about such things, except perhaps as a joke. Everyone there is filled full of what we should call goodness, in the same way that a mirror is filled with light. But they don't call it goodness. They don't call it anything. They are not even thinking about it. They're too busy looking at the source from which it comes. A Minnesota philosophy professor, Edward Langerak, said these words one day in his college chapel. I once knew a little boy when he was seven years old, this boy made a mistake that made a deep impression upon him. He, were, he walked into a drugstore and tried to steal some penny candy. He was unsuccessful. But instead of being reported to the police, the shopkeeper made him go home and tell his parents what he had done. This task was the most difficult he had ever faced. He had fleeting thoughts of breaking his arm on purpose or running in front of a car or doing anything that would relieve him of the dreadful conversation he had to have with his parents. But the conversation took place. The boy's father had one immediate reaction. My son is a criminal. Those words cut to the boy's heart. They were terrible, but they were true seven years old, a criminal. But the boy's weeping mother took only a few seconds to respond to that verdict. She said, my son is not a criminal, he's going to be a preacher. Professor Langerak goes on, I was that boy, and my mother's response was a lesson in love. My father loved me too, loved me enough to say what was true, I had done something that at that moment defined me as a thief. But he did not say the whole truth. My mother saw the possibility in me, saw what I could do, what I could be, not just what I had done. He went on, it turns out they were both wrong. I became neither a preacher nor a criminal. But the way that my mother loved me then taught me much about how to love myself. Suppose there were a person who always saw the possibilities in you, who always forgave you for what you are and what you've done, and who constantly, sympathetically challenges you to what you could be. And suppose this person isn't just anyone, but is a person to whom you and everyone else is ultimately responsible. Would not such a person enable you to discover the power of love, to realize the truth of the claim that only the loved can love. Would not such a person be loved in your love for yourself and in your love for others? 
If so, then in devotion to that person, you could, you would love yourself and your neighbor as yourself. And that would be truly awesome. Jesus says in today's gospel, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It all begins when we open our hearts to our true identity. We are people, men, women, children, loved by God. We love because God loved us first, wrote St. John. Love can never be forced. It flows out of fullness, not out of fear. Henry Nouwen calls this new identity the inner voice of love. It's the indwelling presence of God, the Spirit of God, that frees us to live, to be, to think, to act as God's dearly, dearly loved, beloved children, way beyond the reach of human praise or blame. Let me invite you to pray together with me the collect in red on the front of the service paper. It's not on the front, it's on the inside front page. I'm so sorry. The collect for the day. Together. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Amen. We keep a minute or two of quiet together before the quartet sings for us. service books, I invite you to join me in the creed printed on the service paper this morning. Please stand.
we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who fills our hearts with faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power and honor. We believe in one God, And Joseph is going to lead us in prayers of intercession. Would you sit or kneel to pray? In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, we give you thanks for your grace and protection over us. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Risen and ascended, Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill our church, St. George's, and all your churches on earth with power and compassion, that all who have seen may find forgiveness and know your peace to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. May all who wait on you, O God, renew their strength. May they walk and not faint. May they run and not be weary. May the light of your countenance be lifted up upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our families, friends, and Christian people everywhere, that they may joyfully proclaim and live their faith in you, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who we pray for all those who suffer from hunger, sickness, or broken relationship, that the presence of Jesus Christ in their lives may bring them good health, healing, peace, and joy of your salvation. We remember in our prayer, Tammy, Jonah, Keon, Greg, Kate, Charity, Eric, faithfully departed, Rodrigo, who mourns, Lord, in your mercy, we pray for an end to gun violence and wars among nations, that God may rid this wall of violence and, and war, and let people grow in justice, love, and harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our leaders and those who serve in public office, that you may guide them to work for common gold, uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Send down upon us the gift of the Holy Spirit and renew us with the power from on high. Let us commend ourselves and all of whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Mercifully, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We offer one another a sign of peace.
and we sing together hymn number 233. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. Page 9, we use Eucharistic Prayer A with an extended preface for Pentecost. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and it's our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting peoples of many tongues into the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your good news to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom your spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. high priest this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty renew us by your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son jesus christ our lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. become who you are, the body of Christ. And so as our Saviour himself has taught us, so each of us in our mother tongue pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that Christ died and lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are invited to come forward as directed by the stewards. Draw near with faith.
Let us pray. Faithful God, you fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your love, your joy and your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Page 34 at the bottom, we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand for the final blessing? The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep you, and all those for whom you pray, this Pentecost tide and always. Please be seated for just a moment or two. Very warm welcome once again to St George's. It's very good to have you with us sharing in our Pentecost service. Do join us in the garden uh, for coffee and refreshments. It's on, in the garden on this side. If you feel the need and would like to centre yourself, then the labyrinth is on that side. It's going to be a building site from the end of June until for two or three weeks to be uh, through halfway through July. Uh, we're going to be building our permanent labyrinth. If you'd like to support that, there are some flyers about it on the table at the back. Tomorrow is a sponsored walk for uh, Ethiopia, for a, Western, a small town in Western Ethiopia called Chanka. If you want to join us, do. There are some uh, sponsor forms uh, on the back with some information about it. Meet 11:30 Espan Grunau for two or three hours walk. It's it's not it's not strenuous, I promise you. Um, bring a little snack and something to eat, and there should be, I hope, a typical Ethiopian meal afterwards. And if it's warm enough, we might even be able to swim. In the evening tomorrow, there's a benefit concert for Ukraine, the chamber music concert. Uh, six o'clock here in St. George's. And then next Saturday is the Platinum Jubilee. We're waiting until London's finished and we're going to do it all the same way next week on the 11th of June at half past seven. Andrew, where's Andrew? I can't see him for a moment. There he is. Andrew and the Embassy Singers are, uh, have, and there are flyers at the back. Do come. We're having a PIMS party afterwards in the garden. Um, we will celebrate. The, the, the flag's up, by the way, uh, you'll see outside. You look wonderful. It's, it's so nice. It, I feel warm inside looking at all this red and pink and purple and orange and all the wonderful shades of red. It's good that you've uh, dressed up and shared with us in our service this morning. Many thanks to Laura for playing on the organ. Many thanks to our quartet, Louise, Kaiser, Tonio and Andrew. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> And to those wonderful languages we heard. Beautiful, very uh, great gift. Thank you so much. So for our final hymn, number 156. <laughs>
grace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.